in order to get 3D structure out of 2D images, we need to answer or our software needs to answer for us three questions of the multiple view geometry. The first question is scene geometry. So it's a question about the structure. We have 2D point matches in two or more images, usually more. And we need to know where are the corresponding points in 3D. This is the one that is pretty obvious. We have this point uh, in, in, in the match, uh, to, in the picture match. We have this point on one, two, three, four, nine pictures. And we want to know where this point is located is in 3D. Then we have another question of the correspondence. So the question about stereo matching. We have this point just on one image. And how does it constrain the position of the corresponding point in another image? Lastly, we have a question about camera geometry. So the question of motion. We, if we know if we have a set of corresponding points in two or more images, the question is now what were the camera matrices? So where was the camera while it was taking uh, these views and what were the parameters of the camera? Now I'm gonna list you what do we need? What, we, what did we need in the past and what we need now? We always needed the digital imagery. So this, the pictures that we've taken during uh, uh, during our uh, flight. Uh, then it used to be necessary, right now it's just optional to have the digital elevation model or photographic uh, topographic data set. We also need exterior orientation parameters from aerial triangulation or from inertial me measurement unit. We need camera calibration report, we used to need it. Uh, that contains the interior orientation of the camera. We also can have the ground control point parameters. And what we definitely need, and we always need it, it's uh, the photogrammetric processing software that utilizes collinear collinearity equations. First, the digital imagery. Here we have again the, the pictures. And we talked uh, a lot on the, uh, during previous lecture about why the perspective projection of the photo is not uh, suitable for making any measurements on the digital pro photo uh, photography. Um, and here you have a depiction of where the camera uh, is in the rover that acquired the pictures for our uh, uh, for our assignment. So all this, those pictures were acquired by this, uh, this camera placed in the belly of um, UX5 Trimble. Why did we, uh, we used to uh, need in the past digital elevation model? So as you can see here, this point and this point have the same coordinates. So it's located in the same uh, latitude and longitude. But if we take a picture of that, uh, um, of, of, of this area, we can see that there is a problem of relief, diso relief distortion. It, this point is supposed to be here, where the Dayton plane is, but is depicted in a different spot because of the local, local relief. So uh, in the past, the shape of the ground surface uh, must be known in order to remove these effects of this distortion. Right now it's computed automatically by structure from motion. Lucky we. Uh, this short uh, uh, reminder of the structure from motion that was the, in the length discussed in the last lecture. It's the range imaging technique then uh, describes the process of estimating 3D structures from 2D image, sec image uh, sec sequences and may be coupled with motion signals. So the camera is moving here and is taking pictures of the structure uh, 
and the same points are depicted or mul on multiple uh, image pl planes and thanks to that the collinearity equation can estimate where is what's the location of those points in 3d we mentioned already a couple times exterior exterior orientation of the camera what is that uh, so it's the position and orientation of the object in space position uh, so uh, it, it's uh, regarding three elements and orientation and other three elements so there are a total of six elements necessary for any photogrammetry processing the first three position is x y and z of the exposure 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 station <laughs> Uh, so it is the latitude, longitude and altitude where the camera was exactly located when it was triggering the photo. But this is not uh, it. The other thing is that the camera, as you can see here, can be angled. It can be angled in three planes. Uh, it, therefore, we have three angles that can be called omega, phi and kappa or yaw pitch and roll and uh, you can see here uh, what are those angles if the UAS flies straight flies this direction it can pitch the nose so in this direction it can move a little bit and then the pitch angle will change from zero to some other uh, value then it can also roll so move uh, in direction uh, of the long longitudinal axis and then uh, the yaw is the movement across the perpendicular axis what's the flight log we talked a little bit about this and I um, I mentioned that it has uh, written in the text file the name latitude longitude and altitude now we also can see that it has this three additional numbers here at the end those all are the um, the angles that we just talked about uh, so it ex uh, contains all the elements of exterior orientation and those are measured by the inertial measurement unit and written into text file or it can be also written into the exif file of the photos so if you have any of the dji pr uh, products any of the dji drones you will find the the uh, exterior orientation written into the exif file um, log contains information about the location of the camera and not location of the depicted object and what is the difference we already talked a, lo uh, a little bit about it and you have here a link if you will need a reminder of the lecture in the lecture three what is the interior orientation of the camera in the in the past we needed that uh, uh, interior orientation uh, written in uh, the camera so-called camera calibration report and right now the auto calibration uh, is performed during the structure from motion and it's uh, it's self calibrating the uh, intrinsic camera parameters from uncalibrated images and you can see here um, here is the screenshot from uh, the Agisoft uh, how the interior parameters of the camera so it's like what is what are the uh, distortions from the lens of the camera what is inside the camera what are the, the its distortions not uh, in in contrast to the exterior orientation that is the position of the camera in space how it behaves in, uh, towards the exter exterior and as I mentioned, it can be automatically derived using structure from motion methods. Now we have ground control points. Here you can see the targets that we that were set uh, on one of our missions. So uh, this th those targets have known three coordinates: x, y, and z. We put them on the ground, and we measured 
the uh, the center. So we measured with the GPS what were the, what was the center of the target. If you need to know more. Uh, again, I'm redirecting you to this uh, section of the, uh, the third lecture on also uh, how to process the data with ground control points. It's m more it's written in uh, in this lecture, short lecture entry into the assignment that is not recorded. Uh, what are our processing options? Uh, now we have we have flown our uh, our drone we also know what do we need to process it and now we have this uh, question of where do we process it we can do it locally as we're going to do here uh, during this course so you have the software and locally on your computer you are processing it and you are getting the uh, processing results so the orthophoto the dsm the point cloud and the 3d model you can also upload it to the cloud. There are multiple uh, um, such uh, services online where you can just upload your pictures and you get um, get from them uh, the same processing results. Uh, what is the catch? Of course, money. You need to pay them for the processing. And uh, also you have quite a black box. You just um, upload their, them uh, your uh, your pictures and you have no input you have no uh, usually very little uh, of how is it processed what are the parameters during processing and when there is something wrong in, in the processing outputs you don't know where it came from uh, there is also an option of outsourcing so for example you can hire a professional uh, company uh, here in Raleigh, we have multiple who you would do it for you. Um, and then in this case, you have um, you have more of an input and more of the control of the process. Uh, what to choose? So everything boils down to money and time. Uh, if you have, uh, what's your starting budget and, and equipment? If you already have the software, you have access, you have knowledge, and you fly frequently, maybe it's better for you to have something that is permanent and do it yourself. But if you're, uh, you're just having a drone, you don't have a software and you fly uh, rarely, maybe it's better to look for options that, that do not uh, really uh, require an experience and training uh, for processing and also do not require such a computational power. Uh, no, and also the question about uh, the timing. Do I have uh, time to process the data by yourself? You will see uh, when you will do the assignment that it's quite a uh, lengthy uh, process, um, especially if the data is, uh, uh, is massive. I mean, if that you have a lot of pictures and it, there are uh, really high resolution. If you have decided to do it yourself, as we did, uh, you have options of multiple software packages. What we're going to be using is Agisoft Metashape. You can, I linked here uh, the um, uh, websites for uh, multiple the processing uh, software packages. There is very, uh, very famous Pix4D. It's, uh, it has the same basic capabilities as Agisoft Metashape. It has different business model, um, I would say, different pricing options, and also a little bit different uh, interface. But uh, it, uh, it uses the same equations in the background. Of course, we don't know it. It's a black box. It's not an open source. but compared comparing the results of the uh, processing from IGSoft Metashape and from Pix4D, they are very much comparable, comparable and we're going to talk about it on the later lecture uh, when I will show you uh, data processed in this, the same data processed in these three environments. So in IGSoft, in Pix4D and in Trimble Business Center. 
You also have Drone to Map that is uh, done by Esri and I know a lot of you use Esri products on daily basis so the, they also have an additional, hmm, I would say a patch or additional uh, module for, their, uh, for the drone processing. There is a drone mapper, there is an open source environment, open drone map. I really highly recommend you to look into that. Um, we used to have a, a, a separate assignment during this course that needed to be cut out because we have just a short summer course uh, that will would be uh, processing data in open drone map. Uh, so uh, I encourage you to take a look at what you can do for free because it's totally open source. You can contribute to that and uh, you can process your data absolutely for free. And there, of course, there are many, many more. There is, um, there are um, uh, many solutions that will be a bundle of if you buy a drone, you buy also a software that uh, that uh, um, enables you to process the data. So some of the companies have both components done 